Welcome to the panel. This is a dialogue for dynamic music. Woo. Why, thank you. I was not expecting applause. I just love the announcer voice thing. <laughs> so this is basically just going to be a panel where I talk about dynamic music systems and games that I love because I, well, games that I know because I love the music and the games themselves. And a couple of ways that I've done them and some other examples that I've seen other people do and uh, uh, different FMOD projects that people have shared with me and such. And it's going to be a little bit of a, an experimental panel, too, because I've never done anything like this before. And I'm going to invite as much as you want to do, just sharing your experiences with things. And then at the end, uh, there will be a game that you can play. And you just tell me like what you think about it and such. So first things first, I'm going to ask some questions of everyone. I want to get to know who's in the audience. So first, who's familiar with just the concept itself of dynamic music? There you go. That's a solid almost everyone. I love that. OK. Now, who has actually used middleware like FMOD or WISE? That's a solid less people than last time. <laughs> All right. Next, who is actually like a programmer and has made games? I see you three for three. OK, OK. And, uh, and then finally, who uh, is not any of those things? You're just here for the vibes and the music and to have fun. I respect you. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I love when people come to panels and things where it's like all they do is talk about this high technical stuff. And they're just like, I'm, e I'm here because I enjoy this. I don't understand it, but I enjoy it. I do that a lot. I just like learning things. So. Ah. Ah. Oh, what I was going to say was note. There's a, very, there's a varying level of skill sets in this room. And that's what's going to make this even better, because I myself have a little bit of experience with middleware. I was just a person who enjoyed it only a few months ago. But there are people in here who probably know a lot more than me about audio and middleware and just game development in general. So. Hopefully, I'll get to learn a bit from you, and hopefully, I'll get to teach some of you a little something of what I know. So before we start, let me just lay down what dynamic music is in the event that you don't know what it is. So how I define it is music whose parameters change in accordance with in-game events. What it isn't is music that just like has dynamics, like piano to forte. That should be all music, if it's like good music, at least. <laughs> Don't be one of those people who uses limiters and slams all your dynamics. It's not good. But when I use the term dynamic music, that's what I'm referring to, changing music, not sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's loud music. It can also be seen as the intersection between music composition and sound design, because when you really get into it, you start to associate objects in the world with musical cues. And that can be more of a sound design trick. And really thinking like both of those jobs can really help you make some interesting systems. And it can also come in a lot of different forms, which we'll be getting into later down the line. Uh, but first, I'm going to talk about me, because uh, you're here to listen to me talk about things. So it might help to know who this uh, nameless faces. The name is Akil. And if you look me up on the internet, I will usually write Cassidini because I like that name. It's also sometimes easier to remember. Uh, what I do is I am a media score composer doing films and games and such. And I also just graduated with my master's degree from Indiana University. I also studied film and video game music. So really ties back into everything. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
It was a long, hard only two years, <laughs> but we lived, we survived. Uh, I'm also on the internet, just in case you wanna look me up, I've got a website. Uh, I've got an Instagram, it has some, some videos and stuff. Uh, and also, I have a Twitter, even though that platform's dying, I'm staying on it until the end. <laughs> I usually post like stuff about panels after they're over. Uh, I did one yesterday, I didn't post anything for it yet. Uh, and that'll probably happen like Monday after I get home and sleep. So, why am I qualified to run this panel? The answer is I'm kind of not. So I literally learned how to use FMOD my final semester in school and I just graduated. So I think I've been using it for six-ish months uh, and I've also never shipped a commercial game. I've done like six, five or six game jams. A couple of them I've used FMOD for. So really, I'm not the expert in this situation. However, I envision this as being a way to tell people what I know if they know less than me, and for people who know more, who know more than me, to tell me what they know. Because you know, that's, that's what learning is. Teaching is learning, and learning is teaching. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it's gonna go well. So, a uh, quick overview of what we're gonna talk about. Bam, some examples of good dynamic game music. Wow, a brief overview of FMOD, cause I have that and not wise. And then bam, bam, there we go. Uh, some methods of dynamic audio implementation that I have with my FMOD project files that I have. So first, let's talk about it. So. Uh, I'm gonna do yet another poll question thingy. Uh, oh, and also, if you at any point want to interject and say a comment or ask a question, feel free, open floor. I don't know if that mic works or not, but you can use it. But also this room is like so, oh, great, thank you. So, uh, this room is small enough. I'm sure if you spoke normally, I'd be able to hear you, but just in case, Mike. Okay, so, question. What's your like opinion on dynamic scoring versus regular scoring? Yeah. So Jackie Jackson made the score starter by the by the dynamic scoring. It's kind of cool on the left end. Says we can have all these aggressive drum beats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, so I embarrassingly, I've had Jack 2 since I was like a child and I've never gotten past the first area because I was really bad at games and by the time I got good at games, I had already gotten on to like the next generation. So I haven't gone back to it much, but I, ex I extremely, I remember really well running through <laughs> that first area, killing a bunch of people, getting chased down by the cops and just, listening to how the music would evolve through that. That's basically why I'm in this panel right now. <laughs> so true, so true. All right, so uh, anyone else have any opinions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of, I haven't played it, but I've watched a lot of videos on Hyperlight Drifter, and I'll also be talking about that exact concept later on with a different game. But yeah, that's a really great use. Uh, d anyone else had anything they wanted to say? And also, does anyone like prefer non-dynamic music, just regular old, it plays forward and then it loops? Why so? Mm -hmm. that large disparity in intensity, traditional scoring doesn't 
All right. Yes. <laughs> you can change the way you change it now. At the same time, dynamic chlorine is so awesome. Like, Hollow Knight does it in a weird way that it almost feels bad. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it, it's kind of like they both have their place depending on what you're going for. Yeah. It's funny you said that I cannot imagine Undertale with dynamic music. It's like, where would you put it? Exactly. Where would it go? How would it improve what's already like a banger soundtrack? <laughs> All right. Yes. Are Mm -hmm. Those sound cues are triggered by the dialogue system, which is different than a completely static sound. Uh, I just, yeah, sorry, that's the band that I <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I understand what you're saying. That does make sense. All right, uh, so I we already kind of also went over uh, our favorites, unless someone really wants to say another example. Yes, uh, tell me. Can we say that this is a, a Tears of the Kingdom safe space? Does everyone <laughs> know as much about it as they... It's not really a spoiler for the game. It's definitely an spoiler alert. Just go for it. I've already beaten the game, so I probably know what you're talking about. Kind of when you go skydiving in that game, and just the way that you know it starts out with this cute light kind of descending on top of you, but then the closer you get to the ground, at a certain point, it shifts, and there's like this kind of... Uh, I, I want to say that things start getting... Yeah, and even to the depths, if you can manage to find a hole while you're doing the skydiving. It's very impressive. All right, I'm going to do one more so that we don't get too bogged down. Uh, does anyone else have any one last example they want to talk about? Yes. I am probably going to ask you to tell me what that is after is because I want to play it. That uh, sounds amazing. Arise. Arise, yes. Okay, so here are some of my favorites, and we'll see how um, this YouTube situation is going to work because I did not download any of my audio examples. Oops. Uh, but first off, uh, Pokemon Black and White. Who's played Pokemon Black and White? Great. I love that game. It, 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 it did no wrong, it was perfect. Anyway, so one interesting thing that they did in one of the very first towns was Accumula Town. There were these two characters that you could talk to and they would add in additional layers of to the soundtrack for as long as you were still in that town. And when you left, it would reset, but it was still just amazing how you could control how the, how the theme of the town was. And let me just open it. In the event you have never heard this, let me show you. So that's what it sounds like normally. Ooh, that's the, that's the bass track. Then you learn some piano, then eventually some drums. turns this a uh, normal nice song to honestly one of my favorites in the entire game like very first 
first town and it's already the soundtrack already peaks. Also some sweet piano licks. Yeah, big fan. So next, uh, one thing that one game is gonna be on this a lot because I thought of at least a dozen examples, Super Mario Galaxy. Nintendo does a lot of really good dynamic music, uh, especially for this game. So this particular example is going to be in the domes at the Comet Observatory. So when you go to select a galaxy, pull up this lewd, you have this music to start off. And then once you go to this screen, it layers with some drones. And as you hover over different galaxies with your pointer, which this will do at some point. Let me go back. Yeah. So different notes will play that match the music. And it just adds to this immaculate, kind of somber vibe. It's really pretty. This is one of the, it's like one of the little moments about Super Mario Galaxy that just really hit you hard. Uh, another one that people might be confused about is Dig Dug. How does Dig Dug have dynamic music? Well, let me show you. This is probably one of the earliest examples I can think of. You heard that? He stopped, and then the music stopped. So every time you move in the game, the music plays. Uh, the composer, Yuriko Kano, uh, said in an interview that the way she thought of it was it would be really difficult to do a walking sound effect, one that could repeat endlessly and not be annoying. So instead she was like, what if instead of a sound effect, the entire score was just the walking sound effect? And that's, that's, in, that's interactive music right there. All right, I have one more example, which I'm not gonna play for that long. So No Man's Sky, uh, killer, killer soundtrack to a controversial game. However, the music, you can say, say nothing wrong about this music. It has one of the craziest stories for how the entire soundtrack is made. So they contracted the band 65 Days of Static to basically write an album, which they then released. And then everything that they recorded, all the stems, uh, all the different takes, and some additional extra tracks, they threw that into a custom procedural audio generation program, and that resequences almost everything so that it generates the music of the game. So never loops the same way. This is just one example, if you can hear it. It's kind of low. I think I'm at max volume. Can you hear that? Okay. It's very interesting. Ba you can watch any video of this game and you'll get something different. Which is something that I love about it. And what I love about all these examples is that they all do dynamic music differently. I mean, that's one of the best things about it. When you have a good method to implement it, if you're not doing it just to do it because it's the hip new thing, you can come up with some like really amazing results. That's not to say that I don't like uh, dynamic drone music because that still rocks, but that doesn't need to be every single song. So here comes the, the fun part. I'm gonna open up FMOD. Let's do it. So uh, first, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. Who is familiar with FMOD specifically? Great. Uh, and of you people, who prefers Wise? I'm sorry to use specifically. I will, I will get there eventually. But Wise, that's fair, that's fair. Wise is a little bit more powerful in certain situations, but FMOD is great because it's easier to teach because it just looks like any old audio program. So let's switch over. 
I'm going to have this up because it's just a list of all the things I'm going to talk about. But I am going to drag over. Let's see, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. So this is F mod. Uh, let's see, this is going to be weird because I, I also have to kind of adjust so I can see what I'm doing. So this is the kind of what it'll look like when you just open up when it's blank. Ignore all these things here. This is a, a file for one of the, my school projects. I was just flipping through a bunch of things. I was like, what has everything that I'm going to talk about? So this is just your standard blank window. And one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to create an event. So usually I will do just default, give me 2D timeline, because it'll open up this window. This gives you pretty much everything you need if you're going to just start off either looping a song or thinking of ways of switching between different loops, like doing adaptive audio. Uh, but I'm going to flip into, let me see, where's this? Where do I want this one? No, I don't want that one. I want that one? No. That one? No. Let me, s let me bring this back over to where I can see it. No, I do want this one. Yeah, I did want that one. There we go. I wanted that one. Uh, so <laughs> the second thing you have are the individual assets. That's just audio files that you drag into the program. Uh, FMOD has a few editing tools in it. So you can cut the, er, you can slice up the audio, you can shorten it, you can change the gain on it, the pitch. Uh, it has a lot of tools, but what I usually prefer to do is any serious editing, I'll do somewhere else. FMOD's not great for editing specifically because you can't really do a lot of fine tuning with it. Uh, so I'll usually do all of my edits in a DAW or in an audio editing program like Audacity. Uh, and then I'll drag it in once I feel like it's good to go. But those options are available should you want to use them. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about after that is banks. Banks are something that I don't really use. So if you do use them in FMOD, uh, let me know how you use them, because uh, I don't really. Uh, one way I've seen them used is you can put certain events or tracks into different banks, and then you can do some processing on them with different effects. I also rarely use effects in this because they aren't as uh, they aren't as deep as I would want them to be. Like the reverb doesn't do as much, but again, that's there for you if you want to. But I usually throw everything into the master bank because clean and simple. So now onto the fun part. This is the timeline. Specifically, this is a timeline sheet. This is going to be the thing that's most familiar if you do any music in a DAW. And this is where you put all of the audio in, and you can have it set to either beats and bars, or you can set it to just time itself, which is a button that I cannot see. Oh, it's up here. So eh. now you have the actual time. But I just prefer to keep it here because it's music, and I prefer having my music organized musically. And then it also gives you access to the logic tracks, which we're, uh, which I'm going to dive into later for very specific examples. But for my super brief, super fast overview, you can set the tempo. You can set loops. You can do markers, which, are, which show you which section is which, and then transitions, which will throw you into the different markers that you set it to. So let's see. Let me reset this, because I was playing with it earlier. But this is uh, something I did for a project where it'll just play the intro, we'll go into a loop, and then hit the outro once I've collected all of some little collectible thing. Also, let me see if this is actually going to play out of the right output. Of course it won't. Why would it ever do what I want it to? Very annoying program. I immediately go into preferences. It's already set to where I want it to be. It just 
doesn't do it until you look at it. How strange. Anyway, this is what it sounds like. So this transition marker is throwing it back to the start so long as this parameter is set to zero and not one. I'll dig into parameters a little bit later. And then once I flip this over to one, you'll hear cheering. That doesn't matter yet. And then it goes into the loop section. Another funny thing about the timeline is that it's, it's not necessarily linear. So you can see that I'm moving this one measure of music, but that's not all the music. There's clearly multiple measures of music. What I've done here is I've set this little music event to be asynchronous. So instead of it playing in either it appears on the timeline, it plays the entire track. And I set this to be a perfect loop, I think. Yeah, I definitely that. So then after I do this, this transition region will throw it over to the tag once this is one. So there you go, that's dynamic music in action. Wow, wham bam. Why, thank you. We are so far from over. Uh, yes, question. I, you know, I asked a lot of people if you could use, like, synthesizers inside of this. I don't think it has VST support. At least this current version does not have VST support. If anyone has used a version of FMOD that does have VST support, let me know. But I'm pretty sure it does not because that's one of the things I would love to do with it. Um, but again, if you're implement, if you're like dragging in audio, usually I just either do, I brute force it, I make every single note if I want FMOD to behave like a an instrument, or I'll just write things out with synths in DAWs first and then drag over what I made. Uh, so, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, you're fine. So the the dynamic part of this music is these markers, well, the, this transition thing that I have up here, when it hits, I think that's like measure three, this checker will basically see if this parameter is a zero or a one. So that is, that will change based on the game, which I'm not gonna pull up because that would take way too long to switch between like multiple Unity projects. But basically, this is like you drive and you collect things. Uh, and this is a checker that shows if you started driving or not. Once you hit a button, move forward, the code will switch this to one. That means this will no longer shoot this back to the start. So that is uh, a type of adaptive music where once you start moving, the game responds to that by allowing the music to progress onto a new section. And then it does that again here. This is just a loop. Loops are just normal video game music. Uh, but it'll progress on to the next section again once you've collected all the items. And there's a counter in the game that does that. And once it hits a certain number, it'll, flip, it'll tell FMOD to flip this parameter to one, which will then allow it to play the tag. So that's the dynamic part of the dynamic music. Uh, anyway, next we have action sheets. Action sheets are um, kind of, I don't know what to do with them. In my opinion, they're timeline sheets, but worse, because you do less with them. Uh, but I will show you how they could work. Let me see, bop, let's go wrong the screen. So this is just a list of different uh, assets that I have in here. So what it can do is two things. Uh, it can play tracks consecutively, also known as one at a time, or concurrently at the same time, like so. Well, this is probably gonna play a lot of things, so let me just, uh, let's see if that works. I'm gonna hope that works. <laughs> So 
so yeah, that's what it does. It plays this and then it plays that, which you could do with a timeline, but you could also do with an action. But why do anything with an action? You can just use a timeline. I really don't see the point of these. If you do see the point of these, also let me know. Yes, let me know. Yes, you can do sound effects with them, and sometimes I do, but I also, I, I well, yeah, the intent from, from, the devel from the actual developers of FMOD. I see the intent, but I also see if I put it into a timeline sheet, I could do almost all of the same things, and if I change my mind at any point, it's a lot easier to tweak a timeline than tweak an action sheet. So it's there for a good reason. I just don't really ever use it. But if you find that you like using them, that's how they work. That's what they're there for. Oh, here is here's what, what it sounds like when they're together. This is not going to sound good at all. <laughs> yeah, dissonance. It's hot. OK, let's get rid of that. Bye-bye now. OK. So now we're on to the next thing. This is a little parameter sheet. So parameters, as I've already talked about, th are these things up here. These are sheets that happen, that let you put different assets, different events in them, only if there is a corresponding parameter. So this one I have is a little binary switch. So this goes with the driving parameter and that little cheering sound you heard plays only when it's set to one. So the second you start driving, it plays something. Can you do that entirely from code? Yes. Is it easier to just keep everything in here and worry about everything else later? Also yes. And I am, I'm like maybe 20% programmer, 80% musician. I prefer keeping as much in FMOD as possible. The less I leave up to the code, the better. But that's just me. If you like code and you like doing everything else in code, it might be easier to implement it that way. But just showing you how this works, I'm going to flip this back to zero and hit play. Is that at zero? Yes, it is. <laughs> of course, you don't do what I tell you to do. <laughs> Dumb program. There you go. So playing normally, and then all of a sudden, it switches. <laughs> and then the cheering comes on. So you can do these discrete parameters. You can also make it continuous. Continuous didn't work for this application. There is, There will be examples of continuous later, but I'm going to move on before I get too bogged down. Yes. You could, you could throw all of the audio into FMOD and set up like a parameter sheet like this, where you have like every single texture, like footsteps on grass, footsteps on pavement, footsteps in water, and then you can just have it switch between them so that the game you just have the game tell you what you're walking on, and then FMOD will handle the rest. You can also have it so that each one is in a completely different event, and then the code runs like the specific instance of, oh, we're on grass, play walking on grass, play walking on pavement, stuff like that. I just prefer to do it all this way because I get to play with all of it at once. I get to see all of it in front of me. I don't have to like play the game, see if it works or not, and then be like, oh god, which line of my horrible code messed up. Uh, so uh, let's see, I have so much left, but I'm going to run through the rest of this really quickly. So multi-instruments, uh, which one of these is them? One second. Back to, da, 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 da. let's go with this. So this is also on a little parameter sheet, but this will sh let me show what a multi-instrument does. This flips between a bunch of different audio assets that you can put into it, or whole events. You can put almost anything into a multi-instrument, and that's why they're killer. But basically, it'll either shuffle these or randomize them so that you either 
is just like completely random or you just never hear the same thing twice as it loops. So <laughs> So every time you call it, it just plays something different. Uh, and then there's one of my favorites. Uh, I don't think I have an example of it in this specific one, but I'll get back to that later. Uh, and it's called a scatterer, and it's like a multi-instrument, but even crazier because you can, you put multiple things into it, and then it just plays them back randomly based on its own parameters. And sometimes they play at the same time. You can have it so that they don't, but the specific reason you use it so that they do play at the same time. Uh, and then you can also have it pan them spatially if you want, so you can have random sounds coming from all different corners of the room. It's really powerful. I want to use them a whole lot more often, and I'll show you how I use them uh, as soon as I get to the next part of the demonstration. So let's talk about the different types of dynamic music. Let's see. Mm. So first, interactive music. What is it? It is a result of the player's input and in how they directly affect the game world. I divide this into two main types. Uh, so we have layered interactive music, which, oh look, another Super Mario Galaxy example, quite possibly one of my favorites in all of gaming. So there are these specific panels in Dreadnought Galaxy, and every time you step on them, they'll play a note. The first time I got to this level, I stayed here for a good like five minutes just walking over them because I was like, oh my god, this, is so, this makes such pretty music. I could play that forever, but you get the gist. It's just, it is done really well. Galaxy is a great, great game. If you're ever lacking inspiration, play Galaxy for like a good hour and you'll be like, there's so much I can do. So the next one I want to talk about is parametric, which basically means a parameter gets updated with every time you move. And look at that, another Super Mario Galaxy example. It's like I was just like, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Let me add it to this playlist. OK, so do we all know the rolling ball galaxies? Do we all hate the rolling ball galaxies? It's really stupid. <laughs> it, does, it does not work. Uh, so uh, one of the things that is actually good about this is the way the music changes based on your movement. So the music will speed up and get a little bit more frantic every time you move faster. So here is just examples of that. When you slow down, the music gets a lot less intense. And this intensity is directly related to your speed. So that's just another way that the music can change. It's an example of it getting crazier. Oh, watching that footage gives me nightmares. <laughs> yeah, same. I hate looking, hate looking at that so much. But uh, one good reason for doing this kind of implementation is that it really lets the player leave their mark on the game world. It gets them involved. You can have them literally craft the soundtrack along with the composer. So next, we have adaptive music. So this is similar, but instead it's the game responding to what the player is doing. What does that mean? I'll tell you. So this is divided into two types. You've got horizontal resequencing. This can be either the music will advance to the next section based on how much progress you've made, or it'll flip to different sections based on you know, other, pr other more complicated parameters. Usually, it's just you go forward, it goes forward. You go back, it goes back. But you can implement that however you want to. So one way that I love, that, I w that got me for into it when I was first studying this was Hades. Who's played Hades? Yeah. Who's actually beaten Hades? Oof. Big oof. So this is going to be from like the start of the run, so hopefully no spoilers. But I'm just going to play this for a little bit and let you see how the music changes based on like how you get through the first few moves. 
see it's very chill at the start. And there was a little dip once you cleared all the enemies, but then it starts to get a little more intense. I'm gonna skip forward a bit. More witches. A bit more. There we go. And the more rooms you clear, the more the soundtrack advances, the more intense it gets. This is a really good way of implementing that intensity feature. So that's a great way that happens. The other kind is vertical layering. And that is when you introduce new elements of the track by just fading them in and out. It's like fading stuff in on a mixer. So you can either do that in a linear fashion, like, again, you go forward, new tracks fade in, or you can have a bunch of parameters fade in different elements of the track, sort of like the Accumula Town thing. Sometimes you can have drums play, sometimes you have piano play, sometimes it's both, sometimes it's neither. And then my personal favorite of this, that Mario Kart Wii theme. When you go to select your character, your cart, all that jazz, Different layers of the music fade in the further you get along this menu. Also, the track is just a banger. It's so good. Can you get that, that element? Yeah, and it just builds excitement. It's like, yeah, we get to race. It's so cool. Yeah. So it's great for having music that always updates to suit your action. Really, it's like that intensity level concept. If the gameplay is intense, the music can ramp up the intensity to match. And then when things calm down, the music can back off a little. And it's really popular. This, this specific type of dynamic music is very popular because, one, it's uh, really easy to implement because instead of like doing code that makes something harmonize with the music or making like a very complicated procedural audio engine, all you have to do is chop up a song into different sections and add loops. It's very simple. And that's why I think I love it a lot. It also, like as you could tell, the effect is great because that that Mario Kart Wii music stuck in my head forever. Uh, the last category is generative music. This, or I this is a result of the audio engine sequencing the music, and it adds some probability into a track. It can also be called procedural audio. The name doesn't really matter. All that matters is that there are a lot of different ways you can do this, and I will simplify it down to two. So you can do... Uh, Fully generative music, which is when uh, the game itself would just make the song on the fly, possibly out of VSTs, possibly out of just like small little assets. Uh, and here's an example that is not from a game, but I just wanted to play it. I just wanted to play it. Let's do it. Ain't that beautiful? That was procedurally generated, the entire thing. Funny story, uh, they almost lost this because it was, because it's procedurally generated, uh, the composer could not actually re have it generate the same one twice. And Lucasfilm almost lost the original print of this. They had to go looking for it. I think it took them like two years to find this specific version because it's the one that everyone liked the most. And I have to say, 
I, I love it too. Uh, but the second kind I would call semi-generative because you take larger pre-composed chunks and then you just resequence them together at random based on, again, a lot of different parameters. There are so many ways you can do this. Uh, I'm gonna try to breeze through and get to them. Hopefully no one's coming in directly after this. We'll see what happens. Uh, but Portal 2 is a great example of music that doesn't really Good. loop in the same That's way right. twice. The facility is completely operational again. So it's using a lot of different drones and a lot of different other pre-recorded elements that change both based on what the player is doing, but also just all the time. Just so that nothing loops the same way. I think these test chambers look even better than they did before. That's so right, GLaDOS. So with semi-generative music, it can be a little easier to implement that instead of having something actually compose something on the fly. However, both of them are great because it gives you something that's a little more alive than a standard loop of music. And you can be really flexible with what you have. Uh, yes? What kind? Wha what? Which one specifically? Yeah, tho yeah, that's just layers. So that would be more like adaptive music because that's just, it's switching to a, a new layer or a new intensity level. Generative would be, it is making new music on the fly without any input as to what it is that you're doing. Uh, so uh, the flexibility it has, you can put probability on almost any bit of the music down to the note level or just like the volume, the panning, uh, whether a certain instrument plays at all. And here are some ways it can be used. So I'm gonna just go through a lot of these really quick, uh, but I have some FMOT projects that go over some ambient soundscapes, uh, an instrument adding probability to just one instrument and then an entire generative score. So let me, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with the instrument. So this is something that I did for a live performance. I wanted to have a drum track that was backing me and a few other people up, but I didn't want it to be static. I was like, no, that's, that's boring. It's not ambitious enough. I wanna do something dumb. So I made it semi-generative. So it'll play different bits of rhythm every time I used to go through it, so let me see. It's a little hard to, to see from this angle. I don't think I can double click that open. Oh well, so this, I believe this is the snare track. Where is the play button? Is there a play button somewhere here? Let me just drag it over. No, no there isn't, I'd have to open it. Oh well. Uh, Instead, I'm just going to So this is what's in all of my multi-instruments. This is one version of the kick pattern that can be played. Uh, and again, it is playing through my laptop because FMOD hates me. Ah, no, you stay there. Yeah. And then this is just a little variation on that. And another little variation. So I could go through all these little variations, but instead I'm just gonna play the whole thing. And you tell me what you think. This part's not generative, I just wrote this. This part is.
So what's happening is I just added some probability both into what the kick and s what pattern the kick and snare are playing, so they're not the same thing each time, but also in the hi hats. I can probably open this up. Yeah. So what I did is I not only put some probability into uh, there we go into the uh, level of playback, but also whether certain hits will play back at all. So it gives a little bit more of a human touch to it. So in instead of, even though this is all stuff that I exported from Family Tracker, it sounds a little bit more alive, a little bit more human, as if someone was playing on like a, an electronic drum kit rather than just me sequencing this all together. I also tried to do a little bit of time offset, but I didn't like the way it sounded. It works. I just didn't like the way it sounded, and that is probably one of the most important takeaways. Uh, if you do something and you don't like the way it sounds, you don't have to keep it. Throw it away if you don't like it. Try something different. So yeah, that is my example for the solo instrument. And then, let's see, let me see if I can pull up this other one. This is something one of my friends made that I'm going to show you all. This is a project that they made for a game of tet some type of Tetris game uh, where all of the music is semi-generative. The different notes that the bass plays, the, I think, kick pattern, and some things pop in and out so that it just never loops the same way twice. But here is what it sounds like. responding to player input, but it sounds like it's more alive. And I think it's, uh, I think it's cool. I think it's neat. Okay, so in the interest of time, because this is supposed to end in five minutes, I am going to jump over to something that I made. Da -da 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 -da. I'm also gonna jump over to the slides. There we go. So this is a video game that I made uh, for, a cl for a class, it was for a project. Uh, it's a basic Unity demo that I just did all the music for. It's a space shooter game. And this has a lot of different sound elements. I tried to implement all of the ideas that I talked about, different types of interactive music, uh, different ways of the music uh, progressing, the more you, the better you do in the game. Uh, and also it has a little bit of generative elements. So I'm gonna open up first the fmod file, and then I will call someone up randomly to play the game for me and everyone else to see and judge you forever on your sick gamer skills. So, 
This is my space shooter file. As you see, I have a lot of things in here that do a lot of different music. I'm going to go over uh, how just some bits of it work before I play the full thing. I also can barely see. Oh, there it is. OK, so now I was talking about scatterers earlier. I'm going to solo this and show you how they work. So. I put in a bunch of notes for this chord, and it's just going through each and every one of them, every, however many it says down here. I can't read that, and I don't remember what I put. But it's going through each of these at different, I think at different volumes, and just, or maybe I smashed it, I don't know. Uh, but it's basically just there to harmonize on top of the chord. So it gives it a little bit more of a, a little fluttery feeling. Now when I unsolo this, down here, I've got my semi-generative bass line, something that I was working on for a very long time, but what it basically does, it has a bunch of different phrases in it single measure and it just randomizes whichever one it's going to play and then we have a stinger at the end that plays the same way each time because it leads into the next chord because this is all based on chords uh, so that's how one of these works um, did I do anything else interesting uh, same idea for the kick and snare the hi-hats I kept pretty simple. I just kind of wanted the volume to change a bit so it's not the, doesn't sound like the same exact hit each time. I kind of wanted to have a little bit of bounce and feel to it. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that I needed to? Uh, okay, yeah, let me show the master track. So this is extremely squashed. I like to put everything in as little space as possible in my f -bar projects. Uh, but basically this is going to go through a bunch of different sections. You got your intro, uh, and these are different chords that happen based on something in the gameplay that I'll ask you to tell me about later. And then this will transition between each of these. This will shoot you over to the transition section into the next bit. This is the game over transition which shoots you into the game over loop if you die because you're not a pro gamer. Uh, and then there are a bunch of other things based on if you win, if you didn't win. And I like to, I kept everything in this one event because I wanted it to control all of the music. So sometimes in some, going through other uh, ways other people implement audio, they would have each of these in a separate event, and then the game would call up each different event. But I felt that I would have more control, and I could see exactly what was happening if I kept everything here. So it, it gets a little clunky. Sometimes it doesn't work, but also it was for a class. It didn't have to be perfect, and I was experimenting. And at the end of the day, it, for the most part, worked. Now I'm going to play it for you and just actually, mm, yeah, I'll play it. I'm going to play it. Here's how it sounds. Ha. Let me also unsolo the thing I soloed. <laughs> if I had a dime for every time I did that, I'd be able to buy a badge at this convention. So here you have this loop, keeping it in place, but the second I change, probably, I think it's this one, the second I change this parameter to a one, it'll go from this loop over to this section, which will bring it into the next bit.
single track. Now I'm going to go forward again. And one more time for good measure. So that's how that project works. Now, let's test it out in gamicular form. That's not a word. <coughs> I also wonder if this will work, because I didn't test this part out. But oh well. Oh, now it opened on this screen. <laughs> then <laughs> terrible terrible idea okay who wants to play a little space shooter game go for it okay yep here we go so The game will tell you the controls, but I'm just going to do it in advance because I don't want to talk over the music. Uh, so you're basically just going to uh, use the air uh, arrow keys or WASD to move and then space to shoot. So whatever is most comfortable for the way you play. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. Did you already hit the thing? Oh, I'll do it. All right. And you tell me how you feel about the music. <laughs> So, I want you to tell me, how did you, how did you feel? You can use that mic. Just, if it's on, check if it's on. One, two? Yeah. So yeah. I thought it kept pace with the game pretty well. Like, it didn't feel like you got stuck in any point too long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I was killing enemies. And how do you think the dynamic-ness added to the gameplay? Uh, I think it, uh... Well, I it made it, um, it added more variety, mm -hmm. so it's easier to stay engaged and less likely to feel like, oh, I, I've heard that, that same pattern again and again and again. And the irritation factor low. Mm -hmm. And was it obvious how the things were changing the more you played? Um, now that I've seen it, um, yeah, but if I didn't see that, it, I wouldn't even notice. It'd be like, you know, the frog in the boiling, uh, in, the, in the pot is going up one degree at a time. Yeah, it's very interesting. Sometimes dynamic music can be just totally invisible if you're not really thinking about it. Like, I thought of, I, I did this two ways when I experimented. I first started with the FMOD file and then moved into the game. But for some people, I did the game first and then moved into the FMOD file. And when I did the game first, people were like, Oh, I just heard really good music. I didn't even notice anything was changing. <laughs> so if you're not doing like that 
drastic intensity level change, bringing in like full new instruments, full new frequencies, it can be a little bit of an invisible change, like if you're just doing different chords or moving on to different sections. But that can also be a good thing because do you want your music to stand out or do you want it to fully immerse you and just feel like it's always right? Questions you should ask yourself if you're doing dynamic music. Anyway, who's next? Who wants to play next? Come on up. Okay. So just press R and you'll jump right back into it. Uh, watch your space, yeah. Give it one more try. Give it one more try. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts. I also really like the randomization with the music because mm -hmm. I feel like for a game like this that's so repetitive, it's nice to have um, a randomization. in my opinion, is a little bit interesting. And I know, like, this is a project, so, like, obviously, if, like, it was your game, you'd do things a little differently. Yeah. The idea of having the shooting sound also be the music is really, 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 really cool. But it also kind of conflicts with the shooting noise. The fact that both are going on at the same time. Uh, which shooting noise specifically? Like, the player the, or the... The explosion noise. So the, uh, so the way... So when, if I'm understanding correctly, when you hit space, you play a random note, right? That goes along with the chords. Yes. You basically get to be the melody. Yep. But it, but also with the explosions, it's like, I don't know, it felt a little bit busy. But I still it really is like a very, It is a very busy game. I will say <laughs> that. I, I needed explosions because it would be weird without them. I also kind of wanted to tune the explosions, but I was like... Right. I right, feel like, like make those parts of the music too. At that point, that gets to be too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At, I, I at some point, you have to think. You know, is this a rhythm game or is it just a game? Part of me was like almost trying to make like shoot in a certain rhythm to make a melody, which was a really fun idea. Yes. And you know, I have had that comment before, but. I don't know how to make rhythm games, so I was like, it's a little too much for me, but. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Don't know how to do it yet. Let's, let's give it up for optimism. <laughs> Can I ask, like, when you were picking those notes, yes. um, did you base it on the chords in the scatterer to make sure to avoid dissonance? Uh, not particularly. I, I think I based the scatterer and the notes off of uh, so this is going to sound really pretentious and music theory e, but I was reading the Lydian chromatic concepts and just for each individual chord I was like I'm just going to draw from these to pick whatever notes I want and I think for the playership it was the ascending notes and for the enemies it was the more dissonant descending notes so like the fourth in the flat seven, I believe. Don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've read this or I remember what I wrote. Uh, and then the actual, I think the scatterer instrument has just regular chord tones on top of it. I think I just wanted to have like pretty sounds on top. Yeah. The strings match the chords a lot more than the actual player ship does because I wanted the player's notes to stand out a bit more than right, the Right, so they know for sure that it's them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, really, really neat concept and really well implemented. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else want to do a little run through of the game? Yeah, come on up. All right. So, uh, walk to our arrow in space and just hit R to square yourself back in. Go. 
That's one of the things that I loved about going back to that Super Mario Galaxy like flip switch example. The feeling that I had whenever I was walking on it, I was like, oh, I'm making a melody. I'm making the soundtrack now. I'm, I'm the one that's, you know, the composer in the situation, even though I'm just playing the game normally. And I thought that was just a really cool trick. And I love, it's one of those like little things about games that you just notice. And I wanted to implement that in here. So, I'm gonna, let's see, what time is it? It's probably late, 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 late. But I'm gonna go over one other thing in the FMOP project that I didn't show real quick. Oh, no. I wish there was an easier way to close these things. Okay. Here, okay, so some extra little additional things. Let me move this so I can see it. So the enemies, here is how the laser works. The player works almost exactly the same way, but the enemy will go well just because I like the way it sounds. <laughs> So I did actually find a use for that action sheet thingy. It plays this noise. Can I play it by itself? There we go. I was like, I don't want it to be just a note. I kind of want it to be lasery. And it would be kind of lame if I didn't have just a little whoop pew, whoop pew. So cute. But aside from that, what's more important is every time the enemy ship fires, it plays a note that is somewhat dissonant. One of three different ones. Just because I didn't want the player to be the only one that got in on the fun. Uh, and then, let's see here. That should probably do it. With each different chord, a parameter is updated and that will switch over where this actually starts. <laughs> So that's another way that these timeline sheets can be very non-linear. Because I'm starting at not the start. It doesn't really matter the order in which you place things here. It really, what matters is how the parameters are talking to the events here. So do you want to start something here and then move backwards for some reason? You can do that if you set it up for that. And then the further along this goes, the it switches to a different multi-instrument all the way up into uh, the last section. So going into the details of how the music was implemented, uh, the way I, I also had to like edit some things in the code, uh, and it was to Make it so that the further along you get shooting the asteroids and the enemy ships, the chords would then change onto the next uh, chord in the progression. And then if you shoot all of the enemies, you get the nice wind sound. And if you miss one of them, you get the kind of eh, just like kicking bass little noise. And then with every single chord, the enemy ships and the player laser fires they'll do a different harmony based on every time that they fire. 
and that gets called by a separate thing in the code. Uh, and then on top of that, think of anything else that I missed. Uh, 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 uh. I think that was, I think that was pretty much it because everything else I went over was already in here. And yeah, once you get that game over, you immediately flip into that uh, scenario. But then you never hear the intro again because nothing points back to it. You go to the end, and this jumps you back to the first chord. So that gives you one continuous music scenario that doesn't exactly loop the same way each time, but is always tracking where you are, what your progress level is, and giving you appropriate music to fit that situation, while also letting you add your own little melody to the music. So, yeah, that's my, uh, well, that's my demo. Let's see, what else do I have left? So, my final thoughts on dynamic audio. You can also tell me your final thoughts, should you have any. So, be creative when you're implementing these types of audio systems. Though sometimes the most interesting things come from not thinking as a composer, but again, as a sound designer, thinking, you know, what object could, m you know, make a sound that, does, that improves the music? How can the player's interactions improve the music with different things in the game world? Also, combine the different types of dynamic music. Having music that changes based on intensity is really cool. Having music that changes because you're pressing a button is really cool. Doing both at the same time is super cool. And it just, you know, anything that just, you know, just sounds cool. If it sounds cool, it sounds cool. The more cool things, the more cool it is. That's the law of additive coolness. Copyright. And then, also important, whatever it is that you do, Make sure you are checking against gameplay because you could, despite the law of additive coolness, if it then does not suit the game, it's probably not what you want to go for. You, you, the thing about game music and media music in general is it's always there to serve the higher uh, media that it's written for. So always just check back against that. Uh, now. Questions, comments, does anyone have anything that they would like to say at this point? Yes. So I can answer that by opening up yet another project, because I have so many projects. In fact, there are more projects that I didn't open than projects that I did open. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here we go. So this, actually not that, this one. This is a bass line for a Beatles song that I then ripped apart and threw in a bunch of different extra phrases. What the probability is in this scenario is I was thinking as a bass player, thinking, okay, which parts do I want to keep the same each time I go through this loop? And which parts do I want to add a little bit of extra flair on? Like so. <laughs> so these yellow things are the same each time. And then everything in this pinky green multi-instrument things that I thought well, I wanted to be probability. So when you're doing like actual instruments, it's easiest to think of like a performer and thinking, what would I, you know, change up during my performance? So you know, and versus when would I just need to hit the root because I need a big chunky low E at this moment. So that's one way I do it. I just I use the same thought process for the drums. I was like, okay, if I'm hammering away at a hi hat would it sound different over time? If I'm doing the same kick snare pattern, would that be interesting? Would I want to mix it up a bit, do some extra snare hits here and there? 
that's how I think about things like that. Now, for other instruments, especially ones I don't play or things that are purely synthesized or electronic, uh, I would say probability on and off is an easy way to just generate more interest because of s you just set like half the things to either, if you set half the things to play 50% of the time and you just let it loop, you'll have an almost infinite amount of variations on one specific line. So that's an easy way to just throw probability in. And I, I don't know, there are a lot of different ways that you can think about it and that's just the way I usually do. But I would say, if you have an idea, just throw it in there and try it out. Uh, is there enough time for that? Oh, sorry. I, I yes. Didn't see how close we were to the next panel. All right. So that is the end then. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> I'm going to run out of here as fast as possible. But just in case you want to talk about dynamic music and I'm not available because I ran too fast. Here's some information. I got a website. It's got some of my music on it. Uh, I have an email if you want to you know, talk to me directly. I also have a band camp that has different music on it. My Instagram has some live performance stuff I've done. My mostly dead Twitter, I'll probably post some extra stuff about this panel. And also I've got a YouTube. I write chiptune music. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>